Mike Catherwood, and of course, Dr. Drew Pinsky here from Loveline, and we got some awesome news. Now you can listen to our Loveline radio show whenever and wherever you want. That's right. Thanks to PodcastOne.com, home of the Mike and Dr. Drew podcast. You can get Loveline every night as a free podcast. No more paywall. Just go to PodcastOne.com and click on the Loveline show icon and download. People have been asking about this for years. And now it's here. Loveline, the free podcast, whenever and wherever you want on iTunes and PodcastOne.com. That is PodcastOne.com. Hey everybody, superfan Giovanni here. Welcome to the Classic Love Line Podcast. Today we present to episode number 110 of the Adam Carolla era from February 29th, 1996. It's a Thursday show and also a leap year. Dr. Bruce is making his first appearance of 1996 and the guests are the musical group Ruby, a.k.a. Leslie Rakeen and Mark Walk. It's the first and only known appearance of either guest. And it's the second known appearance of Dr. Bruce of the Adam Carolla era. He was also on episode 41 from November 26, 1995, the infamous No Doubt show. This episode is entirely new to the archive and hasn't been heard since 1996. It's another very, very solid episode. And as per usual, this was recorded in 1996. Some of the medical advice may be out of date. Please consult your own physician or contact Modern Day Loveline at 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew and Mike Catherwood would be happy to take your call. Listener discretion is advised. You can follow us on Twitter at Podcast One. On Facebook, Podcast One there as well, and PodcastOne.com, the home of all your favorite podcasts. Mahalo, and get it on. make a quick correction because it is Dr. Bruce in tonight for the uh, able-bodied Dr. Drew. He is off skiing and pumping his kids full of prescription medications, I'm sure. Dr. Bruce has been here before. He's a hell of a guy. He's not only a doctor. <laughs> yeah, that's the microphone there, by the way, Dr. Bruce. <laughs> Thanks. That helps. He collects guitars. He uh, used to collect sports cars before he got married. So uh, <laughs> he's not only a doctor, but he's an actual human being. With normal male human being middle age problems. Relax, I'm not dropping my pants. Let me get the phone number out. 1 800 L O V E 191. The fax number 310 854 4455. Tonight's guest, Ruby. We have Leslie Rankin from Ruby. She is out in the hall. She will be joining us soon enough. And uh, until then, we will go to the phones. Lisa. Hi, you're on Loveline. Oh, thanks. This is great. Um, I have a question for the doctor. Here he Uh, is. I had a dream the other night that I was lost. But then when I found out where I was, um, there was this guy there. Do you know anything about dreams at all? This is really bad. I'm not Sigmund Freud, but I can take a stab at it. I do a lot of emergency medicine, so maybe that'll help (laughs) me. I figure you're a doctor. You might know. I asked my psychology teacher up at my college, and she didn't know. Go figure. I'm thinking it means you're lesbian. I don't think so. <laughs> Give me a chance. I'm I'm kinder and gentler. Yeah, go ahead, Doc. <laughs> Put the kid gloves on, Doc. Let's go. <laughs> go, go. Yes. Oh, is that that's it? I, that's the dream, that's I it, guess. That's it. That's it. So that's wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute, Lacey. Uh, are you disturbed by the fact that you fell asleep, wandered somewhere in your dream, and there was no, somebody this there? This happened like a half hour's time. I didn't know you can dream in that quick of a time, but I was just wondering what it means in your dream that you're lost. It's just bothering me. I know a lot of people have always said, you know, it means this, this, and that, but I don't remember what this, this, and that was. So uh, you know, I'm I'm at a I'm at a loss to, to help you. You guys don't know what it means. I know what it means. Friends hotline. I'm sticking to my lesbian line. <laughs> I don't think so, man. No, I think when you dream that you're lost, I mean, here's I what I there was a man there, and I found my, my where I was. All right, uh, uh, let me. First off, that was a woman wearing a wearing a no. suit. That wasn't a man. No. All right, let me explain what dreams are. Dreams are sort of the manifestation, obviously, of what's going on in your head, but they're more the literal manifestation, meaning if you're feeling lost in your life, let's say spiritually, don't laugh, Lisa, I'm telling you the truth here, then when you have a dream, you're going to be lost physically. I mean, literally, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'll tell you, I have one reoccurring dream, and it is only one, and unfortunately, it's not a sexual dream. I never have sex dreams. You know what that is? Because I always masturbate before I go to bed. 
<laughs> so I think it takes all the it takes like all the starch out of me before I actually hit the pillow. But the but the point is is my reoccurring dream that I'll have when I'm not taking care of things is I'll dream that I see an animal, a polar bear or a dog or whatever. It'll latch onto my arm or leg, and it'll come down hard with the jaw like a pit bull would. And if I rip my arm away, it's going to do more damage. But if I stay and don't move, I'm just going to be gnawed off eventually. Were you bitten by a dog at a young age? No, it has nothing to do with that. I, I, I explored this. And you know what it is? It's when, it, it's when I, I'm unfinished business. Meaning, let's say I got a parking ticket. I never took care of it, and it went to warrant. If I go in and take care of it, it's going to cost 300 bucks now. But if I don't move, it's going to keep getting worse. You know what I'm saying? So pulling the arm away represents going in and paying it. And not moving represents it accumulating interest in the courts. That's a neurotic dream. Is it? That's very neurotic. You can leave, you know. <laughs> Lisa, You're what's gay. The... <laughs> I think that was Drew, Drew from the grave. From the grave. <laughs> Lisa, any background, any relationship issues going on? Well, things well with the guy, though, was this guy I kind of had the hat for. The, the guy you saw? Yeah. Well, that's different. Why didn't you say it was well, a guy you recognized? I didn't want to cut you off. I didn't want to, you know. I... No, I mean, at the top. Yeah. Yeah, this is a guy. Uh-huh. You get lost, and then you find him. Uh-huh. Okay, there's... he is the answer, then. He is your guide. That's what you're thinking. Okay. And there's some uncertainty here. You don't know where it's going with him yet. Right. And the uncertainty's in the dream. You with me? I can hardly hear you. All right, listen. You there? Yeah. All right, go to bed. <laughs> We're off to fly and start, Dr. Bruce. Uh, Bruce, you know that mic okay? Yeah, You've I got the thing turned at a funky angle. I'm just used to Drew. I'm sorry, man. I missed that guy. Sarah. Hello there. Hey, you're on Loveline. How are you this evening? Good. We have Dr. Bruce sitting in for Dr. Drew. Great. Well, I'm hoping he can help me out tonight. I have a, a little bit of a, a strange question. Is it true that women can ejaculate? My uh, boyfriend said I scored at him. <laughs> Yeah. It's like a Gallagher concert in your bedroom, huh? Yeah, and it's, like, gotten to the point where, like, the sheets have gotten soaked through and stuff. About now, I'm wishing Drew was here, too. <laughs> He's not. No, ejaculate is semen, which is a male. Uh, it's a product of the male reproductive organs or system. Well, and so you can have secretions. Uh, some women have a lot of secretions. That's... You know, where's that coming Mike from? The engineer oh, Mike, the engineer, is earning his $4 yeah, an hour tonight. He's doing a great job there. So uh, uh, absolutely women cannot ejaculate, but they can have a lot of secretions, and that can cause uh, um, so this kind of a situation. Ejaculation well, is the substance, like, not the act. Him. Like, it, it like came out and like shot him in the face. Yeah, he's doing. Uh, Doctor Bruce is caught in the semantics of the whole question. She's you, you're coming essentially. Mm -hmm. You're right, and, and there's muscular contractions right. and something squares. And out. it's akin to a male ejaculating. Akin, nah. Yes. Why it's not? An analogous. Oh, for <laughs> Christ's sake! I'm going to toss you right out of here. We're so nitpicky here. Uh, I know. He's. So is this a problem or? It is for your boyfriend. No, it's not a problem. It's not a. It's not a health or physiologic problem, but it is. It's just the variance you have from one individual to another. Yeah, there. You are not. Alone here, Sarah. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. There are many women. I was just talking to a friend of mine. I will not name him, but I went out to uh, dinner with him. He's married and whatnot. And he said to me, he, we were talking about some old girlfriend of his, and he said she did this. Now, I've never happened to be with a woman who's done that. Then again, rarely do my women reach orgasm. But, the, <laughs> but I'm thinking even if they did, they wouldn't have done that. And so there but is did a certain... turn him on? Did he like it a lot? Uh, oh, Yeah. He loved it. He's blind in one eye, but he loved it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, thanks for the reassurance. Sarah, you're, you're a little atypical, but you're not a freak. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, thanks. Yeah, don't join the circus just yet. Are you okay with that last comment? Can we move on? I think that we've covered that call completely. All right, let's go back to the phones. Jay. Yes. You're on Love Line with Dr. Bruce. Yes, I have this problem. Um, I've been, like, friends with this girl for about six years now. And, um, you know, like, for a month now, we've been, like, like dating. Mm -hmm. And um, everything's been cool and everything. But recently, her father, um, since she found out that I'm black, like, half white and black, and she's white, that he doesn't want us to date no more. 
Is, and I wanted to know what should I do about that. Is that the reason he's giving, or is he giving some BS reason? Um, he just said I'm black. Yeah, but is he? I mean, is he stupid enough or racist enough or uh, white trash enough to say, I don't want you going out with this guy because he's black? Yeah, but he would never tell me to my face. He would always, like, um, either have her sister tell me or have somebody, like, uh, pass the word or something like that. He would just never get on Right, but the word is, you're black, you can't go out with my daughter. Exactly. And you're 18. How old is she? 16. Okay. Does her age have anything to do with the the situation, her being too young to no. go out with you because you're 18 or it's no, clearly they, that he's concerned with your color no she said um their parents said she can date uh, up to um three years older well that's interesting so when she's 33 she could go out the 36 year olds and have her parents approval but it's illegal isn't it for an 18 year old to, to no have he, sex with a 16 year old oh but we're not having sex though uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think it's illegal. Eighteen to sixteen. Oh, sure it is. is it? Well, one of them's a minor and the other one's an, an adult. I uh, didn't think it was illegal. I don't think that's statutory. Right oh yeah, we've sure got, we'll have a, no, an we, attorney we, call we, in. We had a guy. We had a guy the other night call in. He did time in jail. He was nineteen, and she was, she was like fifth, seventeen or fifteen. 15. All right, quit listening to the show. <laughs> you I was driving home from the hospital. I, can, I can't. <laughs> I can't get anything past this guy, Jay. Mm-hmm. What does she think? Because that's the real question. Okay, she she doesn't want to break up with me at all. But they're um they're like saying, well, if you don't break up with him, we're going to send you to boarding school. Mm. What the hell are these parents thinking? I do not know at all. You're a good guy. You treat her right. Yeah. That's about all that should matter. I know this is it's a real sad uh, commentary. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a real difficult situation, and in situations like this, parents sometimes pressure the kids into. Uh, you know, acting out or doing things dishonestly. It almost teaches you to not to communicate honestly. Obviously, it's teaching her that because her, her father is a bigot, it right. sounds like. So, um, you know, do you guys, do you go to, uh, when you go out on dates, do you go out and do things as a group or you just, uh, you know, is there some way you could diffuse his... Uh, Can you lie? No. That's what, <laughs> that's what Dr. Bruce no, but, is asking. Yeah, that's like sort of what we're doing right, like, like right now and everything. Right. We're like playing like like um like pager tag or whatever. <laughs> like yeah. Page me, I'll call her back or whatever. Yeah, pager is not a real good thing to have uh, hanging from your belt when you go to meet the folks. Just in general, no matter what color you are, pager's always bad. Parents immediately think drug dealer. Oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah, so you may want to you may want to remove the the pager if you do have the chance to go over there and meet the folks. But I would say just carry on and just do it in a low profile way. I mean, you couldn't tell him to break up just because the dad's a bigot. No, have you gotten to know the dad at all? Is he willing to talk to you? Or uh, no, he won't say nothing to me. He won't, he won't even meet me. What? <laughs> What's he think, of Eddie Murphy? <laughs> I, I don't mean, even know. Would he mind that? I mean, he has like black friends and everything. He just doesn't want his daughter to like like date black guys. I guess. Yeah. The other thing is if there's another adult that you guys can talk to and maybe have you help loosen things up with, with her parents. But it's it's a very difficult situation. Uh, and in Southern California here, it's a ethnic melting pot. A lot, of, a lot of kids I deal with get into those issues. And it's amazing in different cultures where it's not just a black-white issue with uh, Asians. There are different uh, areas of bigotry and in uh, Europeans. And, you know, it's unfortunate that's the way the world is and that's the way a lot of adults are. Uh, and I think teens today are a lot more open and accepting of other cultures, and um, it's uh, it's tough. If you you know, I know sometimes I've worked with a counselor in dealing with with teens that have these kind of issues, and especially the 16, 18 year old. She's at the age where uh, the parents are still going to be protective, and they can threaten to send her away. And there's not she probably perceives it as there's not much she can do. So sometimes waiting a while until she gets. Uh, you know, a year or so more, and maybe they'll loosen up a little bit. Jay, you're going to have to just just sort of play it cool, do a little song and dance, and and just sort of wait it out until it just becomes reality to them. Eventually, no matter what parents don't like, if you can do it long enough, it just becomes reality. It's like if you got your nose pierced and your folks hated it, if you could keep that hoop in your ear for long enough, eventually your parents would just move on to something else they didn't like about you and let that one go. Am I right, bros? Excellent advice. Is it true you're you're married to an Eskimo? <laughs> no, but I I have many Eskimo friends. Oh, I'm sure you do. Tom. Yeah. You're on Love Line. What's going on? Oh, we're just sitting here having a good time. Glad it's Thursday. Yeah. 
Um, I have a question for Adam. Mm-hmm. Um, I just recently found out I was gay. Uh huh. You, you get that thing in the mail from Ed McMahon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, you're gay. <laughs> You've been selected. <laughs> and uh, and I I don't know how to tell my mom. I mean, I don't. It, it, might, it would just crush her. Yeah. I don't know what to say to her. Uh, do you do you need to tell her? Yeah, probably. Why? Well, she'll find out eventually, won't she? Yeah. But so. but are you living with her now? Yeah, I'm 19. Okay, and you have any plans of moving out? Yeah, next year. Like like uh, an hour after you tell her you're gay? Uh, yeah. Tom. Yeah. I would not burden her with this emotionally. I mean, unless it's the type of thing where you knock some guy up and he's got to move in or something. I don't even know if that's... But you're a doctor, Bruce. You tell me if that's possible. The thing is, Tom, everybody has this sort of impulse to come clean these days. Yeah. And it always seems to be at the wrong time. Like, they don't want to tell their girlfriend they have herpes, but they want to tell their mom they got a cock ring. <laughs> but the, the point is, is I wouldn't tell her. Why does she need to know? Tom sounds like a serious caller. It sounds like this is bothering you quite a bit, and you've thought yeah, about it for a while. it's been bothering me for about three months. Do you think your mom has any idea you're gay? Uh, she hasn't said anything, but I don't think so. Does she have any sort of religious or other preconceived belief system that would well, affect we, her? Well, we're uh, Christian, so I don't she, know. We don't really believe in being gay, but... It, does she have that uh, I'm for Buchanan... Bumper sticker on her car? No. All right. You could be okay then. Well, you know, if she's very legalistic and rigid about about this, then uh, yeah, have you have you talked to a counselor? No. Do you, are you uh, concerned about, you know, she's going to pass out and she's going to get extremely upset about it or react? I think she'll just, like, like not talk to me or, you know, just kind of block me out. Yeah. You know, uh, at the stage you're at in your life, if you are gay, it's important to have a lot of support, especially when you're going to let your a parent or your parents know. Uh, sometimes dealing with friends uh, coming out of the closet, uh, you you do need a lot of support because it's very stressful. And I can you know sense that you're exhibiting or uh, experiencing some stress through this at this point. Um, so, have you been to any counseling, or do you have any uh, friends in common, people that know your mom that might be able to buffer the I don't know. Well, I mean, my my real close friends know. I don't, they don't really have a problem with it, but I don't know. They I don't really would want them to have them talk to my mom for me. No, but being there for you, I think it. You're going to have to decide the time and the place to do it, and you probably have a pretty good idea of your mom's reaction. Yeah. And and being you think aware. I tell her before I move out, or no, I'm going no. <laughs> I mean, let's look at it this way: Who are you trying to protect? Your mom or you? My, me. You. Yeah. Because either way, you shouldn't tell her before you move out. Because she could make it hell. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I really wouldn't. I understand this is weighing on you. And it really shouldn't because you have nothing to feel guilty or bad about. This is just a lifestyle choice or a sexual proclivity. There's nothing wrong with it. So if if you don't feel bad about it, why make her feel bad about it? I know you feel bad about lying, but you're not lying. You're just not telling her what you are. I don't go to my folks' house and tell them I have a, a jugs fetish every other night. I go like once a week and tell them that, but I don't go every other night. So, Tom, I wouldn't say anything. I would move out and let them let them, let them them get on to it. Yeah, let them get on to it. All right? All right? Yeah. And give them the little signs, you know, let this put the squeegee in the bathroom, let them find that. Next time they go to the market, tell them to pick up a little extra yogurt, maybe some diet soda and some kitty litter. Let them sort of stumble onto it. Am I right, Bruce? I think you missed your calling. You just <laughs> got such sensitivity and insight with these people. Uh, let's see. Sarah. Yeah, hey, how's it going, guys? Good. 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 Well, surprise, surprise, Doc, I got a question for you. Uh-huh. Um... I've been having problems um, keeping wet when I'm having sex with my boyfriend, and I really, I just don't know why. You're 17. How old is he? 21. <gasps> uh-huh. Okay. Call the feds. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. 
No, it's, it's, it's a good relationship, though. We're both really happy, and it seems to be going good. Okay, well, there are lubricants you can buy, okay, in the drugstore, and lubrication is a, you know, it's a, a complex endpoint for many, many factors. Physiologic, uh, it has to do with your arousal state, uh, you know, the uh, central nervous system uh, messages to set the glands to secreting. So it, it's a pretty complex problem. You, if you had a pelvic exam and if you've been medically checked out in the last year, had your pap smear? Um, not, not recently, no. Okay, that's a good place to start and just have an exam, make sure everything's okay uh, mechanically. And then, uh, you know, some, sometimes part of this is, uh, you know, there's, whether there's stress involved. It sounds like if your sex life is good and there's, you know, it's not a stressful thing, uh, then sometimes just using a uh, lubricant that you can buy in the drugstore. There are good 30 weight. <laughs> Dave? Hello? Yeah, how you doing? You're on Loveline. What's up, guys? Hey. Hey, uh, I got a bit of a problem there. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I've been going out with this girl for a while. She's a senior in high school, and I'm a freshman in college. And uh, her parents are cool about me coming over on the weekends and everything. And uh, her mom's always been nice to me, and she's like a split, splitting image of her and everything. And uh, she always plays around me, tell me I have a nice button pension and everything, but I thought it was just playful flirting. And then uh, one day I woke up in the morning before she did, and I was going to take a shower. And once in the shower, you can't uh, hear nothing because they have glass sliding doors and a radio, and then I was in there. And her mom came in, and... uh so my penis was erect when she, as soon as I saw her naked and all. So, you know, I was in shock and all. And she came in and inserted it in her, started moving around. Uh-huh. And she just stopped and said, we'll continue this when it's more convenient. Uh-huh. The old bogus call. I'm going the bogus route on that one. Because whenever a guy is caught off guard... The erection is not the first thing that, that happens. You are a psychologist. That's very. Astute. I know. I know. Men spend hours trying to deal with their with their penis. It doesn't just come flying up when mom comes strolling in. Especially most. I've seen most moms nude, by the way. Uh huh. Oh yes. Yeah. This is not a pretty sight. There's hair where hair shouldn't be. There's stretch marks that uh, go around it, like the uh, prime meridian. <laughs> what is that on the globe? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> the equator, but there's also the... All right, well, anyway. And that's that's a very inappropriate situation. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we can get into the serious side of that. That's that's uh, an abusive act by the, the girlfriend's mother. Very inappropriate. No boundaries there. It is. Very unhealthy situation. And unless you forgot your penis and left it in the bathroom, there's no excuse for her getting it up in her and moving it around for you. It's, an, it's, it's assault. Ver- it's assault, assault with a deadly penis. Use a penis, go to prison. That's the law. Hello, this is my dog. His name's Dave. Sit, sit, stay. Roll over. Roll, roll. No, Dave, no. Love line will be right back. Stay. Our friends at Lumosity, Lumosity.com. We all have trainers for our bodies, but what about a trainer for our brain? That's why I like Lumosity.com. They have games designed to work your brain out, improve your focus, attention, memory, and they're designed to keep us sharp and focused. And with Lumosity.com, you get to actually specify exactly the areas that you want to work, and they dial in the games and programs that would be most likely to help you achieve your goals. And then they give you feedback, graphs, and and sort of uh, ongoing uh a record of how you're doing relative to where you've been. Again, it's like a personal trainer for your brain. It's playing online at home from an iPhone, iPad, and, of course, on your iPhone like me, you put the Lumosity app. I like the – there's a matrix memory game, matrix shape game that helps me kind of focus. Sometimes I'll use here and there, but even before I go on the radio or do a podcast, you can track your progress, as I said, and see the actual improvements in every day. Here's what you need to do. You need to go to Lumosity.com today. Click the Start Training button to create your own program, then start playing your first game. That's Lumosity.com, and tell them you heard it from me, Dr. Drew. Hi, this is Victoria Paris, and you're listening to Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carella. 
Well, <clears throat> Victoria Paris, the porn star. Let me get the phone numbers out. 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191. Fax number 310-854-4455. We have Ruby in here. That is Leslie Rankin and Mark Walt. Good Hello. evening. Hello. Hello. And and Ruby is is basic basically Mark your engine are you the engineer? No, uh, we we write a producer. we write and produce and record together. We are a team. But you don't go out <laughs> on the road we we're just talking about. Nice. No, he's smart. Very smart. And yeah. Leslie, you you put a band together. Yep. And you have a band. Yep. And they're just sitting in one room waiting for a phone to ring. Yeah. When you're good and ready to go out on the road, right? Oh, well, we're out on the road just now, and we have been for about mm, the past six weeks or something, yeah. Where are you from, Chicago? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, Don't how you know a you, Chicago how accent did you when guess? you're I know <laughs> the Windy City. <laughs> typical Midwestern accent here. Uh-huh. Yeah, right, Midwestern via a small town in Scotland, basically. Uh, oh, really? And yeah. you've been out here for how long? Um, I've w- touring just about a week. I think touring, but uh, I've uh, I've spent probably most of the last three years in various places in the states. So. Do you make your home here in the United States, or you live in Scotland? Um, I, here somewhere. What? I am at the present time utterly and desperately homeless. Well, we're in Los Angeles now. Yeah, I kind of gather that. But we go all around the country mm-hmm. because we're big time. Yep. Now you're at House of Blues Tuesday night. Yep. Doing. Uh, doing um, a benefit thing for um, Rock the Vote. Oh yeah, yeah. We have this. For Rock the Vote. We have this thing out here where people. I don't know what, it, what it's like in Scotland, but here people don't seem to want to vote. So oh, we, it's, it's pretty much the same in in Britain. I think there are probably like two thirds of the population can't be bothered voting and don't think there's anybody worth voting for. Therefore, the the crap government that we've had for like twenty years is still there. But. They don't do it because they think they're going to get it, uh, you know, car bombed or something, don't they? I mean, we don't vote just because everyone's stoned and wants to watch TV. Uh, we don't vote cause just because there's there's pr- probably nobody worth voting for. You know, each is each one is as bad as the other. So all, the, right. the, all, the, all the car bombing is basically to do with the, the IRA and the. the all right, let's let, let's not. Yeah, we no. won't turn us a big political a form ke- because I, of fish. <clears throat> I I don't know what part of. Uh, Chicago, Scotland's in, so I don't even want to get into this. Is but it the Upper West Side, actually? <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about Salt Peter, which is the name yeah. of the CD, because yeah. we talk about Salt Peter on this show all the time. And uh, really? It, it's really been, it, well, now, not 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 the CD Salt Peter, mm. but in a way we are giving the it chemical, a plug. Yeah, we, mm-hmm. yeah, we talk, it's uh, potassium chloride. <clears throat> I, I always screw this up. It's potassium something. I, I believe that's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, it, it's not a F mainline FDA pot, drug. But pot, why do you guys always talk about potassium it? nitrate? Well, I talk about it because it's something that 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 it's salt that goes to your Peter. It 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 it, it essentially nullifies your penis. No, it's salt from your Peter. Really? Mm-hmm. You kidding? No, they scrape it off. <laughs> when it rains, it pours. Wasn't that the... Uh... All right. Anyway, the point is, is we talk about this because we had Tony Bennett in the other night. He was talking about... Well, he uses it a lot, does he? Not anymore. Oh, really? He doesn't have to. No, when you get to be that age, yeah, God yeah, takes, yeah, yeah. It sort of injects his own little saltpeter into the bloodstream, and, and it takes care of the penis itself. I think it's the prostate that does that. But the, the point is... Uh, look at... <laughs> You're making, you're making some sense. Yeah, it is well, doctors, it's potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate. Yes, that's what it is. And they'll use it, or they used to use it in prisons, and they used yeah, to use right. it in the military. Yeah. And Tony Bennett was saying that when he was in the military in World War One, when he was in the infantry, they put that in all the food, and nobody got an erection. And, you know, the barracks, everyone went to bed at eight. Yeah. That's basically right. it. That's, that doesn't seem to, to be the, the, the most conducive thing to the, the sort of fighting instinct, you know what I mean? Right. I mean, in the middle of war, you think that the, 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 they'd be... They'd want all, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, you think the guy'd want... want them to get a bit excited about things. He'd want to have the bayonet working if he was going to um. be storm in a trench or something, but really no, because it takes all the blood out of the brain and the legs and the other vital things you need for fighting and puts it right to the penis and everyone would just stay in their bunker. Let's talk about some of the titles on Salt Peter very quickly. Okie dokie. All right. We got Tiny Meat. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing to do with the male genitalia. No. 
It, what is it? Those cocktail weenies? What are you yeah, talking about? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. No, it's, it's it basically a sort of metaphor for a fickle heart, like someone who doesn't know the difference between love and lust. So meat would be the heart. Yes. Okay. What about swallow, baby? Now that's got to be yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. That's pretty obvious, really. Yeah. All right. So that's just pure sexual. Um. Yeah, but it's it's it, I don't know. It's it's not. But very sort of blatantly kind of trying to be a sexy song or something. It's basically about power and the way that that the um, the male has always been dominant over the female and all that kind of crap, you know. Not anywhere near me. She fed me salt, Peter, all throughout the making of the yeah. record. <laughs> <laughs> As you get serious with these, Adam gets disappointed and he wants to go yeah. back to the more literal adolescent aspects of the mm. time. Thank you for that, Doctor Bruce. <laughs> getting mine, getting mine in here too. Uh, <laughs> hey, someone's taking your stethoscope. There it goes. <laughs> all right, we're going to go to the phones. We're going to get all sorts of bizarre calls, and you guys are going to jump in and help us out. Shannon. Hi. Hey, you're on Love Line with Ruby. Hi. Me and my boyfriend have been together for almost a year. It'll be a year in April. Um, I cheated on him when we first started going out. Mm. And um, and he just found out a couple of days ago, or like a week ago. Mm-hmm. Well, he wants me to, like, I guess prove to him that I'm sorry. Like, he doesn't believe me. Be quiet for a second, boo. And, um... He wants me to, like, prove to him that I'm sorry, and I want to know, how how can I do that? Uh, who, who's in the background there? It's my daughter. Uh, from him? No. Mm-hmm. From... Uh, how old are you, Shannon? I'm 18. So how old's your daughter? She's three. Wow. That's... Yeah, I had uh, her when I was 15. So you're... I you're when I was 14. And and this is this is another guy? Yeah, it's the, the guy that I cheated on him with when we first started going out actually was her dad. <laughs> Oh, okay. Your daughter's your your yeah. your old boyfriend. Yeah. All right. That's not so bad. No. Oh, it is. <laughs> well, here's what you tell the guy. It's like, look at it this way, sweetheart. In, instead of having sex 300 times, we had sex 301 times. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I like that. <laughs> Does that make any sense, Leslie? No. Uh, no. I think. What? How long have you been going out with him? A year. Almost a year. Yeah. And he's just found out now. Um, excuse me? What? He's just found out just now. Yeah, like a week ago. How did he find out? But the thing is, like, if you're still you're still with him after a year. It doesn't that prove to him that you you still you you love him more than you? I mean, if you wanted the, your the, your kid's father so much, you'd be with him, wouldn't you? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. Well, he's married too. <laughs> <sighs> not not my boyfriend, my oh. baby's father. <laughs> oh, so he he was cheating on his wife. You're cheating on your new boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, August very seems messy. even. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. No, but he. Wait a minute. But but your boyfriend didn't cheat on anybody. No, my boyfriend didn't cheat on. Anybody. All right. How? Here's the deal. There is a sort of cheating zone right at the beginning of every relationship. You you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you, when the relationship he's not, is. He's not more upset that I cheated on him because he does understand that it was the beginning of the relationship and stuff. He's more upset that I've been lying to him for the last nine or ten months about it. Did he ask you every day? Just about. Yeah. Oh. He yeah. a- wait a minute. He that's asked really you. Sick. Yeah, that's bad. You well, mean because he he knew because he he was ke- my um baby's father was coming over to the house, <sighs> and I told him you know nothing was going on, nothing was going on, and then you know I told my baby's father don't come over anymore, you know, and so he, he stopped coming over. Well, him, my boyfriend, and my baby's father became friends like two months ago. Okay, hold on now, Shannon. <laughs> Don't you Here, think you should move to a new city and start a city? <laughs> You're going to another planet. Mm-hmm. You, you know, I, I brought this up before. You know what? I want to shake Shannon's life like an etch a sketch. You know what an etch a sketch yeah, is? Yeah. It's that little red thing that you draw, and then when you don't like, when it comes out bad, you make a wrong turn. You just shake it up and start new. I think maybe you need to do this with with your life. I'm trying. How how old were uh, when you were 14? How old was the baby's father? Um, or how much older is he now? 17. He was 16 or 17. And so now, does he take responsibility in your daughter's life? No. Okay. So then I think now, have you been to any kind of counseling or? Oh yeah. And, because I think you have to look at you know what was going on in your mind when you've been cheating on your on your current boyfriend and are you ready for that relationship and do some have well, you done, see, done some soul I know searching I am and I keep telling him that you know that then you know because I've had a lot of bad relationships and I keep telling him you know 
well, how did I know that you were going to be the one, you know, that I was going to fall in love with and, you know, stay with? Because we live together, me and my current boyfriend. Oh, okay. So now the, the plot thickens. thickens. Even more shaking of the Etch-A-Sketch is now necessary. Yeah. Shannon, you obviously you can't make this up with one, one fell swoop. It's not like, all right, baby, I'm going to give you good paddling. <laughs> we'll get it all out, and then everything's going to be back to normal. Sounds like you're a pretty good idea. Although, yeah, well, um, if you're into the if you're into the or thing, yeah. yeah, Shannon, you're going to have to just apologize profusely for lying to this guy for uh, upwards of a year, and okay. somehow convince him that this is not uh, going to be a recurring trait in that's your personality. How I, that's how I need to, you know, like, how do I do that? I well, mean, you can't do it in one evening. Oh well, yeah, I know. He's he see he um he had to go to L.A. for a week, and he's down there right now. And so, he, like, in his... You know, All right, do you have his phone number, Shannon? He's, um, I have his brother's phone number where he's staying. I don't know if he's home or not. All right, we're going to put you on hold. Okay. And we're going to try to call him. Okay. And and uh, Mark and Leslie from Ruby are going to talk some sense in this guy because yeah. somehow in Scotland they have certain ways of handling things like this. Am but I right? It usually involves a large stick with a nail in the end of it, though. You don't want to get into it. I just kind of want to check up on him anyway. Yeah, he could be screwing around with his own brother, this guy. All right, Shannon, so we're going to put you on hold. Okay. If we can't get hold of the guy and we never talk to you again, Godspeed, and we'll be back. Line. 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 Love Line. We'll be right back. Loveocracy is a place to discover, share, and shop for cool products loved by shoppers. You can discover and browse collections in your circle or check out what's trending across the entire Loveocracy catalog. Products are added from everywhere on the web, and our catalog is continuously updated. Anyone can create a Loveocracy collection of the products they love, and then you can share it with friends, whether it's the clothes in your wardrobe or the books on your shelves. You can share all the stuff you love with the people you care about. Shop this way. Get a great buy on Lovocracy. Our team of expert shopping assistants will actually track down the lowest price from the most reliable retailers so you don't have to spend your time hunting these things down. Simply buy with a click and you are done. Join Lovocracy today and you'll receive a $10 credit. It's $10 for free, a credit to purchase anything on the site. That's Lovocracy, L-U-V-O-C-R-A-C-Y, Lovocracy.com. Trust me, you will L-U-V it. Let me give the phone numbers out real fast. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. The fax number 310-854-4455. We're here with Leslie Rankin and Mark Walk from... Ruby, they're baffled by the troubles of the American youth. Would that be a correct statement? I don't know. I think I, I think it's, it's pretty much prevalent in Britain as, as well. Do you have the same yeah. same problems all around the world, or at least yeah, in your part? I think so. Like teenage pregnancy and people thinking that the the most important thing in their life is to find a partner and settle down and have kids. Yeah. Well, well what about drugs? In Scotland, um, is there a lot of that going around? Um, especially in in places like um, Edinburgh, uh, the, the the worst thing is the poverty and people sharing needles and getting AIDS and stuff like that. Right now, what we <clears throat> when AIDS sort of hit the scene here, at least came into the consciousness was about of, of America it was like eighty six, mm. eighty seven. People were really starting to catch on. To it. it wasn't some bizarre mystery homosexual disease anymore. It was still kind of a homosexual disease, but people knew about it. Well, look, I, I don't mean to sound politically incorrect, but in eighty six, eighty seven, people thought it. Oh, it was just the gays are having AIDS, right? But we knew that they had AIDS. Now, it was before we didn't even know what the hell it was. But the point is, is they were talking about giving out sterilized needles. At that point, I remember, to try to stem the spread of this disease from the gay community or from the uh, IV drug using community into the heterosexual community. And they, they talked about handing out free needles and clean needles to junkies and the Pat Buchanan's of the world and, and the rest of these type of right wing a-holes said, oh, no. 
This would be a horrible idea. We are condoning drug use if we do this. And now, thanks to them, in part, the disease has, has made its way into uh, all, all aspects of society. I think it's a bonehead maneuver. I think we should have taken a C-130, filled it full of syringes, and just dropped it over Los Angeles. And throw some condoms in, and like maybe like some soda in there, too, because people get thirsty when they're shooting up and having sex. But you know what I mean? Do they give out the, the needles in, in Edinburgh? No, they have the same problem, although I don't think it, it, it's religious based you know and i think the 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 main problem in places like edinburgh is like is there are like housing estates like projects where it is it's so poverty stricken no one goes in there no one deals with them it's like a they're like a kind of society of junkies within themselves kind of and they're pretty much left to their own devices would, would if someone came and gave them clean needles would the would the government have a problem with that no nah. No, no, but but no, but the the government is right wing and it doesn't want to spend any of its of its it hard stolen cash, giving it to junkies to right. stop the yeah. spread of AIDS. Yeah, you know? that's how we do. We don't want to spend twenty nine cents for a syringe, but we'll put some guy in a hospice for nine years and pay for that. That's just good yeah. economics. You're an angry young Democrat, I aren't really, you? I really am. It, it really <laughs> pisses me off. You know, but well, part of it though, in, in Working with people that are addicts, there is a ritual of shooting up, and the sharing of needles is sometimes part of that that ritual. Right. And there are also people in, in the prevention field that are politically neutral that debate whether or not giving out condoms and giving out clean needles actually encourages the use versus are you saving lives uh, from preventing the spread of disease versus in, uh, encouraging the uh, – Acting at sexually acting out for teens by giving out condoms. These are things that go on in a neutral. Right. You know, I realize debate. there's lame arguments against right. my <laughs> point, but that's just what they are. Yeah, I found a needle earlier, and I was thinking about shooting up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like my dad's going to find a, a, a bale of pot and go, hey, I got to get me one of those bongs. <laughs> it's ludicrous. Either you do the stuff or you don't. And here's the beauty of it, by the way. And here's my point with that, by the way. It's like the old Jewish uh, enema joke. It couldn't hurt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's just give them the needles. So what? Maybe they don't use them. Let them start a collection. The beauty is if, if some guy in a VW van, some guy wearing Birkenstocks and, and, and an earring decided to give it out on his own, one of these right-wing wackos would probably shoot him in the name of Christ. <laughs> I hate everybody. Laura. Yes? You're on Love Line. Hi. Hi. Um... Well, my question is, um, I wanted to know why I feel like I need to flirt with, like, every girl, whether she's straight or not, when I have a girlfriend. You're insecure. Is that what it is? That's what I think. Ruby? Mark and Leslie from Ruby? What do you think? <laughs> I think she's insecure. I don't I, yeah. I don't really have anything to add to that. I noticed you pointed at Leslie angel. when you said that. I, I did not. Oh, I, was was just pointing, a hand I was pointing at you. Uh, you were, man? Mm -hmm. I was man. noticing your insecurities. <laughs> <laughs> you think it Stop is? Stop looking at me. I'm eyeballing you. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I know. I see that. But I'll win. <laughs> it's real entertaining for the yeah, listening it's, audience. It's, it's, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's great stuff. We just had a Let's stare down. <laughs> Come on. We're going to thumb wrestle yeah. next. You guys listen in. <laughs> Poor L Laura is waiting yeah. for some wisdom. Well, from give you. it to him, Read for Christ's book. sake. You're Read here for a, a night. Make a mark. <laughs> there are a lot of books. Okay, Laura, do you, now when you use the word compelled, compelled can, can imply sort of an obsessional thing with this. Or Now, what kind of compulsion is this? It, and, and when you're talking about, we hear a lot about obsessive compulsive disorder, people that feel compelled sexually to act out. Are you feeling compelled in that sort of way? Or? No, it's like, well, she's gone. She's kind of in a correctional facility, so she's not here with me. But it's like, I don't know if I'm trying to get even with her. Like, ha, look, I can get more girls. Or... So your girlfriend is in a correctional f facility and you're... And I'm on the outside. Okay. She's, she's a dead behind bars. <laughs> huh? You ever see that movie Chained Heat? No, I haven't. <laughs> How about Concrete Jungle? No. You know what goes on in there? Yes, I know. Okay. Okay, so if you're feeling compelled in there and there is some sort of method to the madness, if there's a reason that you're acting out like this to get back at someone versus just out of the clear blue, there's a compulsion to sexually act out. That sort of, a, when you use the word compelled, you know, we can explain and you can work through the whatever feelings of maybe mm -hmm. anger or frustration that your girlfriend, you know, abandonment or whatever that may be. What, what's she in for? Um, assault. Against you or somebody? No, against someone else. This happened way before she met me. Mm-hmm. 
she kicked somebody once, and so she got in trouble. She kicked somebody, and she's she, doing time? She kicked somebody once, and there were two other people that did more damage to him, so she got in trouble for it. Uh-huh. So, so she did that before she met you. Yes. Did you meet her in the pen? Huh? Did you meet her? Where did you meet her? I met her at the City Night Club. Oh, okay. So there's like a furlough nightclub night or something? No, it was before she had her trial. Oh, okay. Oh, I yeah. see. I see. Oh, that's a good time to meet someone when they're just... <laughs> Pre-trial. Me- yes, they're just yeah. being initiated into the penal system. That's <laughs> lovely. And do, do they have conjugal visits for lesbians? Um, I'm not allowed to visit her because I'm just a friend, as they call me. But um, her parents really like me, so they somehow persuaded them to let me visit once a month. Uh huh. Can can you go off to a trailer? No, nope. I have to sit there with her parents. Oh, that's got to be a little uncomfortable with you guys making out and everything. <laughs> we can't touch. Oh, okay. Is it is it the glass? Is it the plexiglass between you? No, it's not. It's a tangible visit. We can hug once when she first comes out, and I can hug when she, hug her when she leaves. But other than that, we're not allowed. You get to. two hugs. And a high five, uh-huh. but that's it. Uh-huh. That is weird. You found the source of frustration, I think. Yeah, no kidding. So, uh, does that mean if you're married or if you're heterosexual, you can get, actually get your tongue down their throat or something? Yeah. Yeah, you can have what's called the conjugal visit. All right. You go out to your own little trailer. Uh, the warden uh, you know, d- puts on a little uh, mood, very mood fair, music, and every, everyone has a good time. <laughs> and speaking of mood music, this is Tiny Meat. And that was Ruby off of Salt Peter, and that was Tiny Meat. Thank you. We're all total pros Indeed. here. <laughs> and we'll be back with my Tiny Meat right after this. Meanwhile, halfway across the city, in a small fish market in Chinatown. Excuse me, could I get some fish? In the meantime, Loveline will be right back. Blinds galore, baby. Ordered our blinds. They're on their way. You order yours at blindsgalore.com. Custom. They'll do curtains. They'll do blinds. They'll do shades. It's all 100% custom. They make it to your exact specs. It is literally made for you. Like I said, drapes, blinds, shades, they got it all. And, you know, it's hot. It's getting hot out there. Cut down on your home's heat and gain a... About 50%. I mean, if you really think about it, upper window facing what? South, west, wherever that sun's going down. And that window's coming in and bleaching out the carpet, bleaching out the furniture. Just the sun just beating the crap out of stuff. Heating your place up. You can cut down the home's heat gain 50% by putting up the right blinds and save up to 150 bucks a year on energy costs. So you want free samples, free shipping? Truly amazing prices, BlindsGalore.com. They really do have Blinds Galore. Go to BlindsGalore.com, BlindsGalore.com. Let me give the phone numbers out real fast. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. 1-800-568-3191. The fax number, 310-854-4455. We're here tonight with Leslie Rankin and Mark Walk from the band Ruby. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to kill about 55 seconds before we do the 10-second break at the top of the hour. So tell us a little about the band. Where are you going to be next? Plug away. Um, We're actually playing... uh, um the Dragonfly in LA mm-hmm. tomorrow. Oh, in Hollywood tomorrow night? Yeah, I think it's sold out though. But we're coming back and uh, to play the Whiskey in about a month, March 26th. Or now, where are you going in between uh, in that month? Um, we're going back to Britain for about uh, 10 dates or something. Then we start the main US tour in South by Southwest on March 16th. Do you play in, in your you play in your hometown? Uh, no. Why not? My, my hometown is a tiny little village in the middle of nowhere, and they don't have places where bands play, but maybe we will sometime. But yeah. you play at a place close enough where you can invite your old uh, friends yeah. and schoolmates and yeah. stuff like that? Yeah. So that's kind of a kick. 
Oh, yeah, definitely. I always thought once I got on the radio, my friends would take some interest and come out and see me, and it never happened. We'll be back in 10. This is Love Line on Radio Station. back so let me reset we have ruby in tonight we have dr bruce sitting in and doing a fine job i might add for dr drew who's away in utah theoretically skiing i bet he comes back with some kind of injury and we're gonna we're gonna do what makes the love line great right now we're going to jenna on line one jenna hi you're on love line hi hi um i have a problem Mm -hmm. i'm 15 and since i was about in first grade i Older men have been very attracted to me. Um, I, when I was in first grade, I went out with a seventh grader, which is really, which is really weird if you can remember being a seventh grader. Uh, when you're when you're in first grade. Yeah. How old are you in first grade? Seven. Seven or eight? I was seven. And you were going out with a seventh grader? Yeah. That's that's not gr- going out. That's a, a being abducted. Abuse, yeah. yeah, I mean... Even by Loveline standards. <laughs> yeah, well, we're fairly liberal over here, if you hadn't gathered by my whole syringe diatribe uh, that I did 20 minutes ago. But but still, a 13-year-old with hormones going through the roof, going out with a... Who wait, let, going out? I can't even call it going out. Who let that happen? Um, You know, really, my parents didn't really know. It was probably a big mistake. But I am 15 now. I am six foot three, and I have always looked a lot older than I than I am. I'm 15 now, and I've just I've always. So let me do some math now. You're 15, so you should be going out with 90 year olds. <laughs> am I right? <laughs> <laughs> You're dating George Burns this weekend. <laughs> Thank you. No, um, actually, my boyfriend now is 25. Oh. And what do you, are you like one of those waif models or something? No. Why, what's, all right, I, all right, hold on. Let's just, I don't blame you. I blame the 25-year-old guy. I mean, Mark, how old are you? 32. 32. But what interest does she think a 25-year-old guy would have in a 15-year-old girl? Mm, sexual? My brother's listening to the radio. Hmm? Go ahead. Who's listening? Oh, my brother was oh. trying to. My four-year-old brother wants to hear me on the radio. You're probably probably best that he's oh, not yeah. exposed to this at the tender age of four. Oh, he listens to you guys every night with me. Are you serious? <laughs> and and he, he's going out with a nineteen-year-old at this point. No. Oh, that's child abuse. A four-year-old listening to this. <laughs> he's going out with one of the chicks from Friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, he's not. He's All right, a sweetie pie. Th- this is this is bordering on sick, isn't it? Um. Yeah, and I really do have a problem with it. It's just. I don't know. Like, the girl before that called and said she flirted a lot. That's basically my story. Do you ever go out with guys your own age? What? Do you ever go out with guys your own age? Yeah, I do, actually. And um, I don't know. This I kind of find it boring. Well, you're 6'3"? You're what? You're 6'3"? I'm 6'3". <laughs> I can see where she'd be just a little like you're 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 fourteen and a half. You're going out with Susan Anton. You're you know you're five one. You, you're spindly. You you barely have hair on your parts, and you're you're going out with this Amazon woman. I could see where that'd be a little intimidating. But there's a happy medium here. I mean, can't you go out with a seventeen year old? What? Oh yeah. It's just I don't know. Okay. Have have you seen a physician and been evaluated for any kind of uh, growth problems? Have you had these kind of things done. My dad done. is seven five. Okay, so there's there's a family history of that <laughs> your dad is not seven five. My dad is seven five. You, I am not kidding. Your dad minute bull <laughs> seven five. No, oh, I'm not kidding. My dad is seven five. I'll I'll talk to him and make a fool of you. That's no, he's not here. Okay, what I think a more fundamental issue it's here stitches is in his head. <laughs> first of all, what's your family background like? What's your family? Oh, my parents are more than supportive. Well, I mean, the yeah. first grade, seventh grade thing. I mean, uh, first of all, uh, individuals that have, whether it's uh, individuals that have boyfriends, girlfriends that are much older, adults with children, that's that's a form of abuse. And frequently there was uh, sexual or physical abuse earlier on. So anything unusual in your past like that? Oh, no, nothing at all. My parents didn't really, don't really know about this kind of stuff. Um, 
Right. But at what age did you become sexually active, and how old was the guy? I mean, I don't have sex with these guys. They just, um, it's just weird. I think that makes a 25-year-old even sicker, if if I may say so, in my own retarded logic. I, I think, in, in my humble opinion, you should be concentrating on making a career for yourself in basketball and give up the blokes. Yeah. Actually, I figure skate. Right. Oh, you do? You can't figure skate when you're that tall with the skates on your nine feet. you got to be like a Christy Yamaguchi. So I want to know about you know, this I guy. Harding. Yeah, tell, what's, the, what's your 25-year-old boyfriend all about? What does he do? He works um, at oh God, what's it called? the John Deere factory. <laughs> no, oh gosh, I don't even remember what it's called. It's some abbreviation, but I don't remember. But w- what does he do though? Ass cap. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do on a date? What? What do we do on a date? Yeah. Oh, we usually go out for dinner. We talk a lot, and um, I mean, there is kissing and stuff involved, but. Yeah, see, you know, at 15 years old, you yeah, obviously you've looked a lot older all of your life. At 15 years old, you need to be around other individuals your age, other kids your age. A 25-year-old guy's got problems. He, you know, mentally you're 15, and I'm, that's not a put-down for you. You're a 15-year-old, and you sound like you're pretty mature for 15. And girls mature faster than guys. So uh, typically a 15-year-old is going to be dating a 16- or 17-year-old, and that's that's no problem. But you're you're cheating yourself. Uh, you know, you're going out with a guy that's got a problem, a 25 dating a 15-year-old. Oh. And you need to take control of the situation. And it's, it's going to be tough. You're going to find older men attracted to you. You're probably an attractive girl. And, um, you know, it's, it's bad you're keeping it a secret from your parents. You know, you, you don't need this kind of stress. And a 25-year-old guy is going to pressure you for sex at some point. And the guy is, is I'm just going on a limb and say the guy's a retard. He's a creep. Yeah, he's a creep. No 25-year-old guy should be going out. Where does he live? Where does he live? He lives in hell. (laughs) This guy is an asshole. Can I say that? (laughs) Hey, Dr. Drew from the grave again. (laughs) And this guy could get some jail time for this. He certainly could. uh, If he consummates the uh, relationship. I I think he should get at least be put in some sort of psychiatric ward just for dating a 15-year-old. Sasha, do you agree? Most definitely. Okay, good. You're on Loveline. Hi. Um... Well, here's my problem. I'm 20, and I've had about, well, yes, exactly six sexual partners, and three of which were, you know, long-term relationships. Uh, that, that's a virgin by Loveline standards, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> You're officially a, a Loveline virgin. We're going to send you out a T-shirt and a medallion. <laughs> well, I feel like a virgin because, well, basically, I've, I've never had an orgasm. Mm. And, um, you know, I used to think that maybe I just hadn't had that emotional bond with a guy, but I was reading this magazine, and it said orgasms were dependent on, like, a subconscious choice, you know, about genetic compatibility or something. So I'm basically wondering what's wrong with me. And, you know. I kind of think that sub- subconscious choice thing is a bit of a cop-out for a lot of people. Uh-huh. You know, I think for the most part it's a lot of crap. Leslie, any any difficulty in the orgasm department, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, well, it, it depends a lot. It def- definitely depends on who you're with. It also depends on how well you know your own body and how much time you spend with your own body. Do you masturbate? Um, I've 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 tried a couple times and I can't do it then either. Uh. <laughs> Oh well, I'm stumped then. <laughs> Has she tried oh, how damn it. machinery? Has she tried machine? Mm. You know. Yeah, like like a backhoe or bobcat <laughs> or it something depends, like that, like a trencher. You, I mean, there, <laughs> for, for women, there there are various ways of masturbating. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it depends if you actually go inside yourself or whether you just. Um, um, play around with your clitoris. And or something. you're not talking about being introspective. You're talking nah, about nah, violating nah, yourself. Yeah, nah. I've done both. I mean, my, my friend got me a vibrator for my birthday. So. Fantastic. <laughs> and yeah, are you using it right? Um, is there a right way? I mean, well, yeah, you know, you turn it on, you kind of stick it down there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't warm it up with any oral sex, do you, Sasha? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, listen. You have to, yeah, I mean, basically, the vagina is like a Rubik's Cube. You just have to keep twisting it until everything matches I mean, up I right. Think what an analogy. <laughs> She's a genius. <laughs> I think you should con- concentrate more on your clitty than inside you anyway. I think that's, that's a yes. lot of the time it's far more sensitive. Do you fantasize when you're doing it? 
Do I? No, I don't. Well, there's well, your problem. Yeah, That's yeah, there you problem. go. Go and get some, get him some dirty books somewhere, or I mean, or watch some <laughs> really bad TV. I think David Letterman's always a good one for that. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. always really turns me on. Anyway. Yeah, me too. <laughs> That's healthy. <laughs> we got a whole other show to do on Mark now. Exactly. Sasha? Yeah? You have to fantasize. Mm. You understand? I fantasize when I'm having sex. Spend, isn't that, isn't yeah, that weird? Yeah. yeah. Here's, you, you spend your whole life masturbating and fantasizing about having sex, and then you start having sex, you're fantasizing about something else. Yeah, I right. fantasize about masturbating while I'm having <laughs> sex. <laughs> But uh, it is it is kind of a bizarre fact. Oh, don't give me that look, that's Bruce. A, that's oh, sick. you fan like attention deficit problem. You, I just saw. I your, got a medication. For I that. just yeah. saw your thought bubble, Bruce. Uh, There's a big <laughs> penis swinging in. And it. you're reading minds now. Too. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Sasha. Right. Yeah. Keep keep you know make make marry that vibrator for a weekend. And get yourself some books and get yourself some videos and really just it, figure it out. Yeah, just stop thinking about re- all the time. Mm-hmm. And that usually works. <laughs> okay, I'll try that. <laughs> you I know, do it all the time. That's why I come up, up with an album like that, you know. You know, the, go and buy the album, the, not all sort you out. <laughs> Cussing isn't so bad in other places. It really sounded okay. We just heard Did the. I, oh, did, yeah. oh, I. Well, you said you kind of spit out the s word, but it was cute. I, yeah, I see. I don't even think. I mean, the, the the kind of vocabulary I use, I don't even think of that word as being a. And you'd a, think a, you think you could use that word on this show when we when we're I getting am. into all sorts of bizarre. Well, you use the p word. P- penis. <laughs> no piss. Piss. Yeah, you see. You piss just, is fine. Is it? All oh right. yeah. Piss is fine, but the other stuff isn't. Piss is in the Bible. Oh, really? Oh, yes. <laughs> and, he what? The, and, it, and it was good. That little piss ant down there. No, you yeah. know how Moses put out the burning bush? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know the show's turned uh, in a bad direction when I start quoting the Bible, by the way. That always means it's Thursday and it's almost time to go, but we don't want to go anywhere too fast because we want to talk to Ken. Hey. Ken, you're on Love Line with Ruby. <laughs> Sounds ecstatic. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you know, I, I'm trying to contain myself here. Uh, I got a, it's a, a bit of a, a dilemma, so to speak. I have a, uh, I have a friend I've known for a little over eight years, and uh, we've uh, we live like this parallel lives kind of thing going on. It's real bizarre, and uh, like uh, we both got married. We've been. Both gotten divorced and whatnot. This is a male friend of yours. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. This is a gal I know. Oh, okay. Is, that sounds like a bizarre question. I know. It's a gal. No, no, it's, it's a gal. Like, huh? Oh, I like gals. <laughs> it's all right. So it's a gal pal of yours. Yeah. And you guys are about the same age. Yeah. And yeah. you've been living parallel lives. I mean, you got married about the same time. Right. Okay. We're like the best of friends. We met under like strange circumstances too. Right. I don't know. It's like a destiny kind of thing. I guess you might. I don't know. It's it's just one of those things. Uh, we met in England during my sophomore year when I went to school over there, of all places. And uh, she lives out of state. Um, I've known her for a long time. Um, we're like real close. We know each other better than you know. Does you Does she have some sort of cosmetic line you'd like to plug at this point, or you're going to ask a question? No. I mean, it's just I don't know. Um, I'm thinking about moving there. Uh, give the relationship a chance. What relationship? Because we've been, like, skirting around the issue for so long um, about actually giving a relationship a shot. So you guys are basically... All right, so here's what happens. All right, Ken, yeah. even if I'm wrong, don't butt in. Why? Here, uh, why? <laughs> because it's my freaking show. Oh, okay. Here's, here's what's happening. All right. And, here's, and, th- and this is a common thing. People, male and female, they strike up friendships, and there's never any any you know physical relationship. They're mm-hmm. just friendships, and they go their separate ways. Okay. She marries an alcoholic. He marries an you know an abuser. Then they both get divorced, and they, then they date, and they date these crazy people, and everything's hell. And then like ten years later, they get back together, and they go, "Hey, uh, maybe we should have got together because everyone else is nuts, and we seem to get along okay." Am I right, Ken? Uh. Uh, are you done now? So <laughs> I, can, I can like not interrupt, right? Okay, uh, you're kind of off base there. There, there was a, there was a brief relationship between the two of us at one point in time, 
and uh, and 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 it's not like a rebound thing because I've seen other people and it's like, you know. How old are the kids? My kid. Both her okay. kids, your kids. My, a stumper. Uh, my daughter, my daughter is uh, she's around two years old, and her son is um he's a little less than two years old. Okay, Ken. So the question is, right? Do you? Pack up, risk everything, and move out to where she is and try to start something up with her. Yeah. I mean, because I feel personally that I don't think I'm going to be able to, you know, have a relationship with somebody else unless I I give this a shot. You're saying she will always be a question mark. Yeah. I mean, constantly. I mean, yeah. All right. So pack everything up, go over there, uh, you know, destroy the relationship in six months, and then move back with a clean conscience. Able to date others, <laughs> but don't move. It's it's an absolute disaster to move in before you know the stability of the relationship. Because anything you do with kids is going to be magnified. Uh, you know the the stability of your relationship is really a, a, an important factor before before you move in. You got to think about the kids. So, Mark Leslie from Ruby, what do you think? I think. Um, how does she feel about it? Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, I haven't, could... he- haven't heard anything about. Her. What she, how she in, in America, we don't ask the woman before we yeah. move in. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking just, I'm storming a house on the yeah. way home. Has he said he's moving in? He just said he was moving there. He didn't say he was moving in. Oh, it's, okay. I mean, she, she has alluded to the fact that when I when I when I move there, that I'm more than welcome to move in. Right. Th- this seems like it's going to end in tragedy, <laughs> except for what are you doing anyway? I mean, what do you got going now? Well, how about a vacation? Then? What do you mean, yeah. what do I have going now? I mean, you don't have anything going now, right? Oh, no, I do. Oh, you do? Yeah. You got another relationship going? Yeah. Oh, well, of she course. must be flattered that you're planning your next move out without her. Oh, well, she knows about it. Oh. oh you see, I want to know more about the two-year-old. I want to know where's the biologic mom. How? Who, wh- no, okay, the mother lives here. Um, matter of fact, uh, the mother has met my friend. Um they get along fine, so but she lives here. Yeah. Mm. Just remembering the two-year-olds and ch- children at each stage of development have different mm. ways of looking, seeing the world, and relating to adults. And just to throw another adult into the home, if you're going to move in together, it's you know there's a lot of trauma that goes on from things like that. You got to think. I think first that you have a two-year-old, you have a responsibility to the two-year-old. If you want to move there, find out if the relationship's going to work, but not right. by moving in right away. All That's, right. Ken, okay. th- this is not going to be settled in my lifetime, <laughs> uh, at least on the air. Okay. You know what I mean? No, I understand. I, 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 it's a tough call. You're gonna, I would write everything down on paper and then put it on the refrigerator and stare at it for two years <laughs> before I did anything. <laughs> Ken needs the Etch-A-Sketch to be shaken. Mm-hmm. Is, do you get that feeling? I will give, we, you know, uh, Engineer Mike, we need the sound of an Etch-A-Sketch. Being shaken, and I don't even know if there's a sound that would would denote that. But that's really bad. <laughs> hey, maybe we could do some sampling on your next uh, album. Maybe the next album could be called Etch a Sketch. Yeah. Oh, Bruce, let's give him one more shot. Hey, don't get sick on me, Mark. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take one more quick call before we uh, go to break. Steven. Yes. Hey, you're on Love Line. Thank you. I have uh, two questions for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, first one for the doctor. Go ahead. Uh, my parents, being the hippies that they were, didn't have me circumcised. Uh-huh. And so now I have a problem with some sort of premature ejaculation. And I'm assuming that's because I wasn't circumcised. Mm-hmm. Is that true? No, that's not true. I happen to know about this. Oh. But you want to take ahead. a stab at it? No, no. I, <laughs> with a stab at his penis? Uh, <laughs> like Lorena Bobbitt over here? No, that, sh- that shouldn't be the reason there's a problem with premature ejaculation. And at your age, it's, you know, this is really, I think, a an issue of uh, maturity. Maturity and anxiety oh, and, and, and dis- comfort with, you know, are you, is this a stable relationship you've been in or does this happen uh, with one-night stands or, you know, just... Issues. Th- those are the kind of questions I'd have. 
it's, he, a, it's pretty much it's a stable release. Stephen, here's the deal, because I was just uh, hearing about this yesterday. Apparently, here's the way it works. The penis, when it has the sheath, if you will, over it, or the uh, foreskin, is one layer thick on the epidermal scale, whatever they call that. What? What, what would you call That's that? That's fine. Epidermal. Okay, okay. One, one, one layer. One layer. Uh, when it's been exposed, and let me tell you about the penis. It takes a beating. <laughs> I mean, pardon the pun, but when the penis is circumcised, <laughs> the head of the penis is knocked around like a racquetball inside your shorts. <laughs> Wait a minute, I think I just scored. All right, the point is, is it's smacking up against the jeans. You're rubbing everything. I use mine to actually work on my car. So I mean, it's, <laughs> I'll take the lug nuts off there, like you know, like one of those pneumatic I think you knew wrenches. Something about this, you're gonna get a serious <laughs> answer. No, I'm serious. Oh, okay. Like an impact wrench. <laughs> I can rotate my tires in ten minutes. Now here's the deal. It gets to be 15 layers thick eventually because it becomes callous. I mean, like any skin on your body, meaning the skin on your arm is thin because it does not take anything, and the skin on your hand, because it's being used constantly, my left hand slightly more than my right, it builds up a callus. So your penis becomes callous. It becomes less Sensi- sensitized, desensitized. Was this a doctor if you will. last night taught you this? No, no, I was oh, listening to another guy oh, on the, no, on the no, ride no. home. <laughs> Drew hates him when I bring him up, and I love the guy. So the point is, is this is true, but it doesn't mean squat because in places like Europe, where many of the men aren't circumcised, the majority of the men aren't circumcised, they don't have a problem statistically with premature ejaculation. Am I right, Leslie? Um. I've got no idea. Nobody I hang out with anyway. But at the same time, you would you would think even um. The the a, a penis with a, a foreskin on it is going to be less sensitive because it's got the foreskin on it, even when it's inside somebody. Yeah, but it's like you know the dog. I mean? You know, when the dog gets an erection, yeah. out, it looks like yeah. lipstick. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of one of those things. Yeah, but that's, that's you still got a half an inch of blubber yeah. rattling, circumcised, rattling uncircumcised. around. Circumcised, uncircumcised. Oh, I wish that's not generally the problem with premature ejaculation. <laughs> All so right, it's more uh, of a Stephen. So it's like more sensitive uh, when it's uh, yeah. But Stephen, listen. Uh-huh. You, you, you got the right idea by blaming your parents, but don't blame the penis. Blame them for the emotional scarring that caused the premature ejaculation. D- and we'll be back. Loveline will be right back. And if you're not here, we'll hunt you down and shoot you in the head. Just kidding. Hey, Mike. Yeah, Dr. Drew. The Mike and Drew Podcast. It's the best podcast in the world, and it is a great episode this week. We got Ian, Uncle Creepy McCall, yeah. UFC fighter. He joins us on the podcast. We talk about Incan Skulls, the movie we're going to make about me murdering people all over the globe. Oh, yeah. Iranian haircuts that are oh, acceptable. That was bizarre. Yes, it is. Knife fight pregnancies. Yes. With girls who have no vaginas. No, well, yes. 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 Girl gets pregnant for a knife fight without a vagina. Homeless people in Venice love Loveline. And urinating on your house. They have to tune in. It's all on the Mike and Dr. Drew podcast. Everything we said is true. Check it out only at podcastone.com. Hi, this is Robert Blake, and you're listening to Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Keep on stroking. What the hell? Oh, Robert Blake. We should get him back soon. He was a sage, that man. Stop messing with the microphone. Mark. Yeah, Leslie. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll, I'll go there. Yeah. Fine. Well, however you want to fly. I move these for a living. You do? Yeah. yeah. You work See? for Beacons? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me get the phone numbers out. 1-800-LOVE-191. 1-800-568-3191. Fax number 310-854-4455. We're here with Leslie Rankin and Mark Walken. Better... Walken. I was thinking of Christopher Walken today, actually. I mm-hmm. saw a movie of his uh, over the weekend and enjoyed it. Mark Walk from Ruby. And Weez has a song off of Salt Peter, which is the name of Ruby's CD. Yes. And the name of that song is Paraffin. That was Ruby off of Salt Peter with Paraffin. Isn't paraffin the uh, mm. like wax that you melt on top of preserves? Um, no, actually, in Britain, anyway, it's, it's just a, a sort of flammable liquid with a rather pungent smell. All right, let me read some lyrics here from the song. Old man got me in the eye again, stuck his bony finger in, turned me around and did it 
<clears throat> oh, now I smell like paraffin. Yep. What the hell does that mean? Uh, Christ knows. I probably wrote it about 3 o'clock in the morning after vast quantities of berry beer. All know. right, so it doesn't... I mean, you're taking artistic license. It doesn't necessarily have to be about uh, some... Some oh, event that happened. No, no old no. man just, approached you with preserves or anything. No, 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 or or or, or, or a bony some, finger, or bony finger, or any kind of <laughs> heating flammable liquid or anything like that. No, it's just a, a kind of vague thing about people in positions of of power who don't deserve it or c- kind of demand respect and don't deserve it. Basically, you oh. know, old farts in suits. And old guys. Can, with can you see fat? Is yeah. that is that right? Okay. <laughs> I, th- I hope so. Especially we, if you can't pronounce an R. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me. You, you know, in, with your dialect or your accent, you can say just about anything. It just You could say, kill the Jews, and it'd come off sounding real nice. <laughs> oh, I did it. Uh, see that. you later, man. <laughs> Mark, you know I'm kidding, man. Okay. You Jewish guy? Mm-hmm. You know, you people are so creative. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The guy I'm making fun of from a uh, religion standpoint would be Mark Walk. He mm-hmm. is from Ruby. The uh, gal was talking about paraffin is Leslie Rankin. I know you don't like to be called a gal, I'm sure. Uh, I don't really I don't really care. But I'm the you guy. Know, as long as you get the kind of vague Isn't gender he empowered? distinctions, right, you know? I am Adam Carolla. Tonight, we have Dr. Bruce sitting in for Dr. Drew and doing an ample, more than ample. Oh, thank you. Job as he shoots me a look. Chris. Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, you're on Loveline. Good, good. Big fan of yours. Say hi to Ruby and Dr. Bruce. Nice Aww. to have you in tonight. Um, I just had a comment more than anything than a question. Um, You're the Loveline ambassador, yes? <laughs> Fantastic That's having you kids aboard. <laughs> if you need anything, I'll be on the Lido deck. <laughs> I'm Julie from Live Boat. Anyway, um, I just had a comment more than anything about a caller that you had earlier named Tom. Mm-hmm. And he had a um, dilemma about opening up to his mom about being gay. Mm-hmm. And um, I had a similar situation a few years, like a couple years ago with my best friend. He, um, his parents are like the Disneyland characters of religion, and everything that they had of a stereotypical gay was out of, from TV. And he was terrified of coming out to his friends, including me being his <coughs> best friend of like six years, and to his best friend, um, and to his parents. He just didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And he finally came out to me, and he didn't know what to do. I mean, he would cry at any given moment just because he was so frustrated and so stressed over everything. Well, the gays are very emotional people. <laughs> well, but yeah, who's left? You. I got the Jews and the gays. Who's next? <laughs> but anyway, he was just so stressed over having to tell his parents because they're such religious um, figures. They just He didn't know how they would handle it, and he still lives with them. And now we're both 22, and it's been a couple of years. He told them, um, I don't know, like a couple months afterwards, he finally he had to break down and he had to tell them. But the, my point is, is they got over it. They still love him. They've adapted to it. And my comment was to Tom just to say, you know, if he feels like he can't hold it in any longer, even if he's living with his mom, he's got to tell her. Because no matter what happens, if it's if it's a true mom, an unconditional love, she'll still love him no matter what. And she'll adapt to it. Right. And that was my main comment. That's all I wanted to call. It's been bugging me since I heard it in my car cruising home. So <laughs> I just thought I'd call him. Make the comment and say hey to you guys. <clears throat> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> and I'll be listening to you later. Take care. Take- you know, I was having this idea. Well, I had many ideas while Chris was talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm very too. impressed with your <laughs> self restraint there. Was- uh, because I had many ideas. <laughs> uh-huh. I, 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 I came up with a way to clear up this whole greenhouse effect, but then I forgot. <laughs> I've got a drug for you. I came up with some clean burning alternative fuels, and then I forgot that one. I had many, many ideas about the nature of man being good or evil. I had a lot. But one idea that did stick with me there should be an organization called Newsbreakers. Here's a group that goes to your house. And breaks news in a very polite way to people. For instance, your son is gay. We thought you should know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You could talk to these people. Um, your son's got herpes. You know what I mean? We could take, you could, this could be an organization. You know, you have people these days, they plan parties. You have people these days who, who you know, they, they, they do your toenails. Why can't we have an organization or group of people that you pay that would that would handle things professionally and delicately with 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 eloquence the way a guy like Tom could never do it you know what i mean that's very codependent 
But don't you think it would be good to have someone who's ex- experienced in, 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 in telling parents about their gay sons yeah. or daughters come and break the news? Don't you, like, you don't think there's don't any like, market for this then, at all? Then the sons, oh, I think there might be, but you're encouraging dysfunction. I mean, my God. I then the lo- sons and daughters would have to walk in at the house afterwards, and the atmosphere would be, like, thick enough to cut with a knife and really dodgy. There'd be some kind of bad newsbreakers van that where the kid could park out, you know, park out front, the kid could sit in it and monitor what was going on. You know what I mean? And then come back in an opportune time. Maybe uh, years later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the next yeah. life. Yeah, maybe that would maybe work. it could be a public public thing, you know, yeah. like a government office. Yeah, or you could just They could have a uniform. One guy who just float around like if you're having a party going, <clears throat> pardon maybe me, but ha- maybe they could have a singing one. You know what I mean? They could come up with balloons and stuff like that and sing <laughs> and cakes. Do it perhaps a- like a like if your son's oh, gay, Mrs. we do it. A- your son is gay. <laughs> <laughs> Little Herman's Hermits. Yeah. <laughs> All right, maybe we'll do like, if your son's gay, we do an Ethel Merman song. And if she's uh, lesbian, we do like Joan Baez or something with a little edge to it. Am I right? Okay, mm-hmm. I'm wrong, but we'll be back. <laughs> Call Loveline. 1-800-LOVE-191. Loveline. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, super fan Giovanni here. If you're looking to buy something online you want to support this show, here's what you need to do. Use the Amazon link on our show site. Just go to podcastone.com and click on the classic love line icon, then click the Amazon banner and save it as your full-time Amazon link. Doing that gets you the same Amazon place you normally go, but with a bonus. Amazon kicks back a small percentage of the sale to help support the show. That means more classic love line and fewer commercials for you. Plus, you don't pay any extra for anything. Same Amazon, same prices. Now, I'm not telling you to buy something here. I'm just saying that when you decide to go to Amazon to do some shopping, go to podcastone.com and click the classic love line show and use the Amazon banner right there. Save the URL as your Amazon page. It's that easy. Then every time you shop on Amazon, you'll be helping classic love line climb to the top of the podcast mountain. Thanks for supporting the cause. Mahalo. The name of the show is Love Line. My name's Adam Carolla. Sitting in for Dr. Drew is Dr. Bruce. Guest tonight, Ruby. We have Leslie Rankin and Mark Walk from the group. And, well, that's about it with the group, actually. Except for mm. the guys who actually mm. play with you when you're on the road, but they're not yeah. really the group. You guys are the brains. Yeah, we, we do the we do the um, the writing and recording stuff, and then we get some people in. Yeah. And you do it in Mark's studio in Seattle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. you go get the band together and say, yeah. here's what you guys got to do. Yep. Yeah. Basically. Let me get the phone numbers out. 1-800-LOVE-191. <laughs> Not that I didn't want to talk about that. <laughs> we do have a show to do here. Fax number 310-854-4455. Bruce is uh, drawing with a, with a highlighter pencil, so we cannot make out <laughs> what the hell it is. I think it's crop circles. I think it? Bruce should go out and call in. Bruce really <laughs> wants to take line three, and that's why we're going to line five. Emma. Yes. Hey, you're on Love Line. line. <laughs> I can't believe it. How yes. are you guys? Oh, fantastic. Good. You guys are entertainment beyond belief. The co- the commercials have a little bit to be desired, but... Yeah. Um, we're seeing if I can just talk straight through them. <laughs> Do you listen to the same commercials um, all across the United States, or are they different in each state? Uh, I don't even. I, I this is news that we're even on across the United States. <laughs> I thought we were just on in parts of North Hollywood. Okay, that's news to me too. Now I'm calling from um, Santa Barbara. You have a question? I have um, a crazy streak in me this evening, considering it's um, leap year, mm-hmm. the 29th every four years. And <laughs> um, somebody told me today that women are able to ask their. Um, Lovers to marry them on this year. I heard that. Yeah. Ha- ha- Katie, what is Sadie, Hawkins. Sadie Hawkins. Sadie Hawkins. Really? And um, my my boyfriend is visiting me from Colorado, mm-hmm. and he's at my house right now. Uh huh. And I'm at work where I listen to you guys every night. Uh huh. And I wanted to call him and ask him to marry me. Oh, really? And I don't know if he's listening or not. 
Dude, is, is this craziness? Yes, you're clinically insane, but this is good radio. Thank you. Dr. Bruce, am I insane? Mm, no, but poor judgment, maybe. <laughs> oh, what do you mean, poor judgment? <laughs> the voice of uh, reason. <laughs> she's listening and she likes you. <laughs> that, that, is, that is a strike. It's, it's, a, it's a love like thing with, with Loveline, you know? All right, do we want to call him? At, at your home, right? Yeah, yeah. And explain to him that in in a little quicker fashion than he did uh, to us just now that it's leap year and it's Sadie Hawkins year and it, and, and it's the year of the rat. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in a whole Chinese calendar, what year was that? That is this year. Okay. And right. <laughs> and it is time for you to ask him. How long have you gone out with him? Um, we've known each other for about seven months. Oh, uh, well, uh, nothing wrong with a little impulse here. Uh, let me explain. <laughs> I don't know. It They're not going to make worth... it a year, so might as well get hitched now. Yeah, it, it might just be worth it just for brownie points and a good back rub when you get home, you know? Yeah, right. then blow it off tomorrow. Yeah, you can always wake up tomorrow and see how I was I'll drunk. Get over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me had a wild hair. This is a wild hair. That's what I'm saying. All right, Emma, so we're going to get this guy's number. We're going to give him a call back, right? Okay. All right, we're going to put you on hold. You give it to lovely Sherry. And, uh, by the way, going back about three hours to uh, Shannon, who called at the top of the show, we put her on hold trying to call her uh, boyfriend or something like that. his brother. Anyway, uh, brother picked up the phone. Boyfriend wasn't around, and uh, then I forgot all about it. So nothing ever came of that. And uh, what call do you want to go to, Mr. Bruce? Three. Three? Line four, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> You're abusive. Hello. Kristen, you've been on hold for one hour and seven minutes. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry, 107. 107 minutes, which is which is uh, an hour and a half plus seven minutes. Oh, no, wait a minute, hour and 40. 47 dead. minutes. Hour and Jeez. Jesus. It only took me 20 minutes to decipher the amount of time you're on the phone. Kristen? Yes? you have a question? I had a question for you. Oh. Um, I just wanted to know um, if you had any connections on how I could get into porn acting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th- there's a guy named Vito? <laughs> <laughs> what city are you in? North Hollywood. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, statistically, you should have already been in three porn movies then if you live in North Hollywood. There's some sort of ordinance that if you live in North Hollywood, which is the porn capital of the world, if you're between the ages of uh, 16 and 65, you must do at least three films a year. It's interesting. As a matter of fact, I'm due. She's called and singled you out as advice for her. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, oh, it's flattery. Yes. Well, we had uh, the lovely Jenna Jameson on last night. I'm guessing that's her Christian name. And she talked all about the pornography world, of which she was starlet of the year this year. And uh, I said that I went and watched her make... Uh, apply her craft, as it were, <laughs> in in some barn in North Hollywood. It was about 130 degrees in there, and I almost passed out. But I was able to last the 14 hours <laughs> that it took to make uh, this sure you movie. Every minute. Yeah, uh, from what I know, a- actually, you could um, you could call. Uh, why don't you call? There's a place. I guess we'll give him a plug. There's a place called uh, Wicked Pictures. Mm-hmm. That's uh, I think it's in Canoga Parks in the West Valley. Probably be able to get it through um, through the information. Kristen, and, why do you want to get into porn art, porn movies? Well, uh, oh, okay. Do we want to be? <laughs> oh, okay, well, all right. Or? Let's go. Let's tackle that, and then I'll get into the address. Well, I don't know. I just thought it might be fun. Uh, okay, uh, I'm turning nice now. Uh, yeah. The, well, what's going on? What do you mean? What do you mean you thought it'd be? F- it, it, it's it's not. It's really kind of hot and dirty, and food's free, and the pay's low, but. <laughs> Well, at first I want to do stripping, but... Oh, you want to... You, you, well, what's going on? You got a boyfriend? Um, a few. Where's your dad? He's not around. Yeah. Did he do anything to you? No. You got along well with him? Yeah. Where is he now? I don't know. Somewhere in the valley. Any any abuse history? Any problems when you were growing up? Any uh-uh. substance abuse problems? No. Yeah, you know, I don't, we may get a huge phone response after me saying this, but I, a lot of the people in the pornography industry are not, you know, uh, not there as helping type people, and there's a lot of dysfunction well, and a lot of. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess I missed that show. Yeah, but there's not a whole lot of nurturing going on in the porn It's business. not a real healthy industry, it's not a real healthy job choice, and, uh, you know, the sexuality there. 
uh, without getting into any any moral moralizing. Uh, you know, well, it's not what you want your daughter to to get into. What about and, your son? <laughs> no, not not my son. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, Kristen, yeah. Here's the deal. It's something that you can't really take back. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? I mean, once you get in, once you, you know, you get in and you you burn bright, but you burn fast. It's one of those things, and they they use you up and they spit you out pretty quick. I mean, it's pretty fast turnover in the porn business, and a lot, and you end up regretting it later, most likely. Well, you know what I'm saying, Kristen? Yeah. I mean, you want to go on. I mean, you're 20 years old now, but you want to go on and, and get married and have a family and do all that kind of what we'd call normal stuff eventually. I guess, maybe. I, I would think you probably will at some point in your life. And, and this kind of jeopardizes that to a degree. It is hard. You become stigmatized. It becomes hard to get out. You stay in too long. And it, it's not necessarily the greatest group, as, as much as I hate to uh, bash no, but I thought I thought you would agree with me since you are Adam Carolla. Yeah, well, I, I like to watch your movies and all, but y- you know what I mean. It's like um, I like to drink Coke. It doesn't mean I want to go to work at the factory. <laughs> you know, there's a no lot idea of with that man. There is a lot of victimization that goes on in that industry. I've treated patients in my addiction medicine practice that have, you know, described to me their experience uh, in stripping and in uh, working in pornographic movies, and it's uh, to me it's a horrible place to end up and. Uh, you know, I think you should just not Chris, jump into that before you uh, really look at other options for a uh, yeah. career. Kristen, yes. just really take some time and weigh it out and talk to some of your friends and do talk to everybody and really decide you want to do it. And then if you want to do it and you're really set on it, then you can call uh, the folks over there at Wicked Pictures. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, there are people who do it, who make a lot of money, who enjoy it, who seem... <laughs> Uh, fine with it. She and doesn't seem too sure. No, yeah, she I doesn't think, seem I get, sure. I get the impression that she called up here because she wants to talk about something else that's plaguing right. her. Mind I, I and did that too. is a way to get into and it. And I, it wish I didn't think she was being honest about talking about her past. And I that. completely agree with you, Leslie, except for we have a potential newlyweds waiting to get on the <laughs> show, and we have to go to them. Uh, Engineer Mike, are you going to bring them up? Hello. Emma. Hi. Chris. Yes. Chris, uh, concubine of, of Emma. Excuse me? Yeah, you are the new... <laughs> I, I dumped this guy of hers vocabulary. Uh, Chris? Yes. You know who Emma is? Yes, I Hi, do. Hi, Christopher. Hi, Emma. You know, it's leap year, Chris. I know, I've heard. You know what that means? Yes. Emma wants to leap on top of you when she gets home. All right, I'll be <laughs> You got You're it. You're lucky it's not sodomy year. He doesn't use the right talc powder, though. Oh yeah, a woman after my own heart. She's <laughs> she she's cut out of the right cloth. We just need the the brand, Adam. Emma. The brand. Emma. Yes. We have about forty five seconds, so do not be sidetracked. This is the most important day of your life. Go ahead. Yes. You, my love. <laughs> I love you so much, and I know you don't believe me every time I ask you to marry me. So I had to do it over the air in front of the whole nation. Now it's official. Will you marry me? Of course I will. Woo! <laughs> oh my God! Under the stars and the moon. I don't believe you. Well, I should. But I... <laughs> now, have you thought about a date, Emma? Welcome to California. Um, have you bought him a ring, Emma? <laughs> yes, I did actually. <laughs> Are you going to carry his ass across the threshold, Emma? <laughs> <laughs> um, across the plank, maybe. Yes. Take the big dive. <laughs> when are you thinking about tying the knot? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe uh, this summer. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Chris, you can be a June bride. <laughs> You'll be blushing. It's a good time to get married, you know. I don't know. You just got to... I'd do it tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. do it tomorrow. Yeah, because one of you is going to wise up. I, I, just, I just skipped out to Vegas. Like, now you could probably catch can, the last can flight. Can you guys get him a ticket? <laughs> like, yeah, we can set you. Yeah, I can't even get a freaking T-shirt. Are you kidding? Chris thought it was for next four years, leap year, they'd get married. Uh, oh, so your anniversary, you, you only, you only like celebrate like three in your lifetime. Oh, it's a real cheapskate kind of deal. Actually, one if you're talking about the average marriage. Go to Vegas. That's uh, it. Catch the red 
catch a red eye to Vegas. You calling from Santa Barbara, Emma? Yeah, I'm calling from Santa Barbara. Well, they have an airport there. It's just like a dock. Oh, yeah. No, oh, they okay. Have an airport. They have an airport. <laughs> All right, hop in the uh, Cessna Piper Cub, just like the one they <laughs> shot down over the uh, airspace in Cuba there, and and wing on to Vegas. Is Get loaded. Leslie, is Leslie going to be at the Hard Rock Cafe? Maybe I could pay her to sing for us. The hard rock, where's the Hard Rock Cafe? Oh, it's it's in it's, the it's bad, bad casino in Vegas. You don't want to go there. Uh, stick stick. If, with I, if I were you, I would just go straight to the nearest lesbian Elvis impersonator and get the job done. Pronto. <laughs> cool. Actually, I'm the nearest lesbian Elvis impersonator. <laughs> so you, go to the second you, closest will you one. Love, love me tender to my um, boyfriend Leslie. Love me tender. Love me tender. Oh, no. Oh, my. Oh, he's hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Puzzle, he's all hey. Oh. You will receive. All right, Emma, yes. Chris, congratulations. Chris, you may want to start picking out garters. i got to go to the bathroom now. Jeez. You, sir, do, you, do, you do, do you do that sitting down? or? <laughs> <laughs> all right, now that I've robbed you of your masculinity, <laughs> we're going to a commercial. Love line. Call one eight hundred love one nine one. Love line. We'll be right back. Well, real fast. I want to thank uh, Ruby, would be uh, Leslie Rankin and Mark Walk. They came in. They did a fine job. They're real sports. And I want everyone to go out and buy Ruby's record, Salt Peter. I want to thank Dr. Bruce for coming in here and doing a great job on short notice. Fantastic. Uh, Dr. Drew, I hear, will be back on Sunday. And you'll hear him say things like... You're fat. You're overweight. When I was 19, I ate about four boiled peyote buttons and stayed up all night but felt no effect. If I find you stealing my underwear again, here's what's going to happen. This (laughs) is not acceptable. Pee on this stick for me. (laughs) You're gay. (laughs) And other Drewisms you all have uh, known and loved over the years. Until then, I'm Adam Carolla, and we'll see you Sunday. So that's it, then. You have been listening to Love Line. The opinions expressed on Love Line by Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew, or anyone are not necessarily ours. Be happy. Be happy. Happy, happy, happy. happy. Love Line's producer is Ann Wilkins. Thank you. Thank you.